ಬನಚಾರಿ ಜಾಮುನ ತೀರ ಬನಚಾರಿ ಜಮುನ ತೀರ ಬನಚಾರಿ ಜಯ ರಾಧ ಮಾಧವ ಕುಂಜ ಬಿಹಾರಿ ಜಯ ರಾಧ ಮಾಧವ ಕುಂಜ ಬಿಹಾರಿ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ ಹರೆ ಶ್ರೀ ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಧಾ ಕುಂಜ ಬಿಹಾರಿ ಕಿ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಒಂದು ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ಪ್ರೇಯರ್ಸ್ ಓಂ ಜ್ಞಾನಿ ಮೃದಂದ ಜ್ಞಾನಂಜನಾಶಲಾಕಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರುನ್ ಮಿಲಿತ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುವೇ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಮನೋಭೀಷ್ಟ ಸ್ಥಾಪಿತ ಭೂತಲೆ ಸ್ವಯಂ ರೂಪ ಕದಾಮಯ ದಾತಿ ಸ್ವಾಹ ಪದಂತಿ ವಂದೇಹಂ ಶ್ರೀಗುರೋ ಶ್ರೀಯುಥಾಪದಕಮಲಂ ಶ್ರೀಗುರುನ್ ವೈಷ್ಣವಾಂಶ್ರೀರೂಪ ಸಾಗ್ರಜಾಂ ಸಹಗನ ರಘುನಾಥನ್ ವಿಥ ತಂ ಸಜೀವ ಸಾಧ್ವೈತ ಸಾವದೂತ ಪರಿಜನ ಸಹಿತ ಕೃಷ್ಣಚೈತನ್ಯ ಶ್ರೀರಾಧಾಕೃಷ್ಣಪದಾನ್ ಸಹಗನ ರಿತ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಶಾಖಾನ್ ಮಿತಾಂಶ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕರುಣಾ ಸಿಂಧು ದೀನಬಂಧು ಜಗತ್ಪತೆ ಗೋಪೇಶ ಗೋಪಿಕಾ ಕಾಂತ ರಾಧಾ ಕಾಂತ ನಮೋಸ್ತುತೆ ತಾಪ್ತ ಕಾಂಚನ ಗೌರಾಂಗೀ ರಾಧೆ ವೃಂದಾವನೇಶ್ವರಿ ವೃಷಭಾನು ಸುತೆ ದೇವಿ ಪ್ರಣಮಿ ಹರಿ ಪ್ರಿಯ ವಂಚಕಲ್ಪತ್ರಿಯುಭಶ್ಚ ಕೃಪಾ ಸಿಂಧೂಭ್ಯ ಪತಿ ಪಾವನೆಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಜಾಯ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭೂ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಆದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧಾರ್ ಸಾರಿ ಗೌರಭಕ್ತವೃಂದ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ ಹರೆ ಸೊ 
We're reading from Bhagavad Gita, chapter 6, text number 28. Please repeat after me. Yunjanevam sadatmanam Yogi vigata kalmashaha Sukhena Brahma samsparsham Atyantam sukham ashnute Yunjanevam sadatmanam Yogi vigata kalmashaha Sukhena Brahma samsparsham Atyantam Sukham Ashnute Yunjaneva Sadatmanam Yogi Vigata Kalmashaha Sukhena Brahma Samsparsham Atyantam Sukham Ashnute I'll recite it, the, the complete verse, and then somebody can repeat. Yunjanevam sadatmanam yogi vigata kalmashaha sukhena brahma samsparsham atyantam sukham ashnute. Prabhus. Yunjanevam sadatmanam yogi vigata kalmashaha Sukhena Brahma samsparsham Atyantam sukham ashnute Yunjanevam sadatmanam Yogi vigata kalpushaha Kena Brahma samsparsham Atyantam Sukham Ashnute Matajis Yunjanevam Sadatmanam Yogi Vigata Kalmashaha Sukhena Brahma Samsparsham Atyantam Sukham Ashnute Yunjanevam Sadatmanam Yogi Vigata Kalmashaha Sukhena Brahma Samsparsham Atyantam Sukham Ashnute Yunjanevam Sadatmanam Yogi Vigata Kalmashaha Sukhena Brahma Samsparsham Atyantam Sukham Ashnute Yunjan Engaging in Yoga Practice Evam Thus Sada Always Atmanam, the Self, Yogi, one who is in touch with the Supreme Self, Vigata, freed from, Kalmashaha, all material contamination, Sukhena, in transcendental happiness, Brahma Samsparsham, being in constant touch with the Supreme. Atyantam, the highest. Sukham, happiness. Ashnute, attains. Translation Thus, the self controlled yogi, constantly engaged in yoga practice, becomes free from all material contamination and achieves the highest stage of perfect happiness in transcendental loving service to the Lord. 
purport by his divine grace ac bhakti vedanta swami shila prabhupad shila prabhupad ki jai self realization means knowing one's constitutional position in relationship to the supreme the individual soul is part and parcel of the supreme and his position is to render transcendental service to the lord this transcendental contact with the supreme is called brahma samsparsha so some of you can come forward a little bit small room so we have been on this um, last two or three events or classes have been on the the word power i think um, kanai gopal prabhu spoke on power of attitude or positive attitude um goranga prabhu spoke on power of selfless service and i i thought we are having too many power issues in state of texas the energy consumption is going up so why not to continue with power theme so the power of prayers or importance of prayers is the topic for today so i would love to say a very warm welcome on a hot weather sunday but it is already so hot so maybe it is warm outside it's cooler inside so a very cool welcome on a warm hot weather sunday and i'm very happy to be amongst all of you um i am happy because i have association of devotees and i'm sure that all of you you are here because you also are looking for happiness either is it it is in association of devotees or it's in association of doing service with devotees or you're happy just by seeing the most magnanimous beautiful deities of shri shri radha kunj bihari shri shri jagannath baldev subhadra and shri shri gaur nithai and then when we come together we always want to hear something positive something good that makes us happy yes we want to eat krishna prasadam because it makes us happy we are also looking to chant in association of devotees because it makes us happy so all these different activities that we do we do it because we want to be happy isn't it so we can say that our lives are centered around to facilitate happiness around ourselves for others which also gives us happiness yes no issue there correct so if you want to be happy for an hour it's easy we are here for 2 to 3 hours we are happy now if i say can you be happy for a day you will say doable you know i can engage in certain activities that keeps me happy i say okay what about if you want to be happy continuously without a break for a week becomes a little difficult isn't it and then go beyond a little bit and we want to say if what if you want to be happy for an entire year now we are coming into the space which is a little challenging yes because it's week was a difficult so year has to be challenging yes but what kind of activities make us happy what kind of activities make us happy during that 1 hour 2 hour 3 hour week or a day what kind of activities the one that we like the one we like to do yes what else what makes what kind of activities make us happy you were saying yes you were playing with barbie dolls so he spoke on your behalf see you were saying it in your mind he read your mind playing with the barbie doll makes us happy what else makes us happy yes so people who are around us who are happy seeing them makes us happy the people around us whom we love seeing them makes us happy so how can we be happy all the time being in association with such people who are always happy wonderful answer so being in association of those who are always happy so we can experience you know small periods of happiness but is there really a possibility for us to be happy all the time without a break not possible anybody else differs with that opinion 
not possible let's say so many of us we parked our car outside in the parking lot we took a minute minute and a half to walk inside to the temple hall and in that one and a one, one and a one and a half minute we felt we thought oh how hot it is it, this is a sweltering heat and it's only going to get worse during the afternoon it's supposed to hit 104 105 so it's a hot weather day and sometimes we are doing activities outside like next saturday is our you know seva weekend we're going to be here doing clean up outside inside and we are going to be outdoors you cannot avoid it yeah so you will probably need a lot of hydration with cold water a lemonade potentially <clears throat> with some ice cream so so that you can you know for the whatever time period you are outside you can stay a little bit cooler but ultimately you are only going to be comfortable and happy when you go back to your own house in and sit in an ac and are relaxed yeah outside we are doing seva but at some point you will want to go home and you want to be comfortable similarly in this world we try to be temporarily happy with our possess- possessions we try to be temporarily happy with our sense gratification we try to be temporarily happy with the association of the modes of material nature right what are the modes of the material nature sattva gun raja gun and tamo gun and in english passion ignorance and goodness yes so but the permanent happiness can come only when we connect with the supreme lord when one is connected with the supreme lord then one is free from what material contaminations and and in entanglements yes material contaminations or entanglements then as in the in the translation and in the purposeful prabhupad writes that one becomes steady in the self because we are connected with the supreme then we can achieve the higher or highest rather perfectional stage of happiness because we are connected with something supremely eternal which is our eternal constitutional position so how happiness comes when we are connected to supreme lord right that's that's the eternal sp- state of happiness but how do we get to that stage the whole essence of yoga right is to connect with the supreme lord we are nowadays seeing people are you know narrowing down the definition and scope of yoga to some physical postures or some breathing exercise but the whole purpose of yoga is to connect yunjam yunjam that's the word in the in the shloka yunjam so yunjam to connect to whom to the supreme lord why so we can be happy so there are three aspects of to our life right one is mental one is physical and the third one is spiritual so if someone is doing some yogic processes like physical exercise some postures some breathing exercise some meditation so we can say that our you know one is physically and mentally fit or ment- let's just rephrase it one is trying to be physically fit and mentally sound i won't say mentally fit physically fit and mentally sound okay but then what comes next <clears throat> then you know when you have a physically fit body and you have a sound mind i would say stable mind then that combination is a convenient position to get connected to the god to get connected to the supreme lord so then the question arises how do we connect to the lord any ideas how do we connect to the lord by doing what by chanting by hearing yes nine processes of bhakti yes and what other kind of activities connect us to the god doing services yes yeah. sadhu sangha your nine processes cover everything so yes so doing services one of them one of the nine processes of bhakti is prayers vandanam 
vandana yes so we connect to the lord by the process of prayers but what is a prayer what is a prayer what is the definition of a prayer involving involve me in your service yes okay glorification of the lord yes what else expressing our gratitude to the lord that is a way of performing a prayer so prayer i i think everyone would agree is a universal language to communicate with the lord correct and it's a conversation some and it is a very personal conversation with the lord right from it's a heart to heart right it's a medium to connect that human heart to the divine heart yes and it is that personal connection that we all are able to and should make to connect with the supreme lord so let's say let's take few scenarios when we are talking to our superiors when we deal with our superiors we ask for their permission yes when we deal with our elders we request things of them yes when we do deal with our juniors we instruct them on how to do certain things but when we deal with the supreme creator we pray yeah so we should pray whom we should pray when should we pray how should we pray what is the art of prayer what is the mood of prayer so these are the things that we need to contemplate on so let's start with why we should pray why we should pray what are what are some of the thoughts what why we should pray to connect with krishna okay to please krishna okay for the sanctity of the soul okay to ask for help from krishna yes what else what does what does prayer do make connection with krishna what do, what is the impact of a prayer what does prayer do what effect prayer has on us we are praying so what is what is the effect of prayer gives us strength satisfaction purify our soul yes hope yes yes all are all are those correct um, answers when we pray some prabhu said it gives us strength we become stronger i'll tell you a story there was a little boy just like him playing with a spider man so his father said go outside play in the courtyard so little boy said yes yes i want to go play outside in the courtyard but in the courtyard he notices there is a big rock so in order for the boy to run around and play with his little sister no elder sister the rock had to be moved out of the position so this boulder of a rock had to be moved out of the position so when he went outside he's like i cannot play with her until this rock is moved so why don't i push the rock so he tries to push the rock but the rock rock was a little big for him so he could not push the rock so now he is wondering what do i do so he goes back to his dad he says daddy i cannot push the rock so the daddy says to him you know your son you're not using your fullest strength you're stronger go push the rock so he says okay my dad says go push the rock i'm not using my fullest strength i'm going to go and i'm going to push the rock again so he tries hard but he cannot push the rock so he comes back again after trying so he tells his father daddy i cannot push the rock so the father says son you are still not using your fullest strength go try again so he goes out again in the courtyard and the sister is watching sister is not helping the son is pushing the rock but he cannot push the rock so he comes back again tired this time he says daddy i give up i cannot push the rock so the father tells him that your fullest strength is in me i am here for you i am your fullest strength 
you did not ask me for help. So the fullest strength for this little boy is to take help from the father. Similarly, the fullest strength for each of us is to take help from the Supreme Father. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, in chapter 14, verse number 4, Aham bija prada pita. I am the seed-giving father. So he is our eternal father, whom we should go ask for help, for strength. So we, when we pray, we get strength. We become stronger. Yeah? What else prayer does? What other effect prayer has? Somebody said, gives us hope. What else does the prayer do? It gives us satisfaction. It rejuvenates us. Yes? You know, Lincoln said, many times in my life, I went through so much misery that if, there, if I was to divide all that misery amongst, equally amongst every soul on this planet, there will not be a single smiling face left. And even during those times, when I looked deep in my heart, I, could, I found a friend. I found an ally who would never betray me like others did. And that was God. He, he said, he, my friend, God, revived me. He rejuvenated me. He nourished me. And he gave me confidence. So, prayer gives us strength. Prayer gives us rejuvenation. It gives us hope. It gives us a sense of security. It gives us a sense of safety. Yes? And what else prayer does? It helps convert our worst fears into faith. Has anybody experienced that? Worst fears, when we are fearful, we approach the Supreme Lord with surrender. Yes? There was a very important day in the history of mankind. June 6th, 1944. Does anybody know what was the importance of that day? June 6th, 1944. It was the D-Day. World War II. D-Day. In, in World War II, 65 to 85 million people died. It's one of the worst wars ever to take place. 61 countries were directly involved. Over 100 plus countries were indirectly, indirectly involved in that war. But on that D-Day, a very interesting thing happened. All these soldiers who were ready for this one last push, they were geared up with all the armor and ammunition and they were carrying all this weight. So much so, they could not carry one additional bullet because the weight was so much that they were carrying for this last push. But it is said that over 65% of them were carrying something which was common amongst most of them. And that was a book of faith with them because they wanted to overcome their fears. So, so you see, the prayer has the strength to convert our fears, worst fears, into faith. You know, when I was growing up in India, um, 10th grade board exams, I, went, I had CBSE board, north, northern part of India. And then 12th grade, again, we have CBSE board. Those of you who have experienced CBSE boards, you know the, the most exciting time of your life is in that period of February through May, in which you feel that the days must, should get longer and longer, and the sunlight should not go away. And then when the week of exam is there, before every exam, every other day, the board examination, you would wake up early, you would first go to a temple. <laughs> Temples will be full of students. And guess what? This pattern repeats four months later. Because then the parents are going to the temple before the examination results are out. 
So the temple halls, the churches, they are full of visitors, students four months prior and parents four months later. Isn't this beautiful? <laughs> to have a feeling that we have somebody, eternal, an eternal well-wisher who is more wiser than us, who is more stronger than us, who is more powerful than us, who loves us unconditionally, who is there to protect us, who has got our back and who is always on our side. That brings so much hope and confidence to us in our lives. There is somebody in our congregation who once shared with me many years ago that this person was standing in front of the deities and all of a sudden the deities communicated with this person and said, I've got your back. And this devotee tells me that I did not understand what it means. What, what, was the, what was the meaning of this message to me? That I've got your back. And several weeks later, a family member of this devotee gets very, very sick. So sick that it's, that person is bedridden. But then this devotee remembers this message that the deities communicated to this, person, this devotee that I've got your back. Because deities had communicated, I am here. I will take care of this. What's to come? So sometimes we don't see in present our situation and we are not able to assess it. That, hey, why am I going through this? Why am I suffering like this? But the sweet Lord, the supreme Lord knows what's to come. And he prepares us. And he creates situations around us that could be worse than they are today. He creates situations so that, they, that we don't get the worst result. The situations could be even worse than we are in today, but we don't get the worst result. So he minimizes those effects. What else does prayer does? When we are doing kirtan or when we are doing arti, we are worshipping the deity, it nourishes our body, mind, and soul. We say we are not this body, but we live in this body temporarily. Yes? Temporarily. Because we are spiritual beings going through a human experience, not human beings going through a spiritual experience. Yes? Soul is part and parcel of the Supreme Lord. So when we connect with the Lord via the prayer, soul is nourished. Because it's in harmony with its eternal nature. Because we are part and parcel of the super soul, the supreme soul. Yeah? And mind is in a happy state when it is peaceful. So we practice mantra meditation early in the morning. So we are calm, we are peaceful throughout the day. And we don't get agitated easily. There are things beyond our control. But you know these things... Keep a kavach around us, an armor around us, yes? We stay in mode of goodness. You know, there is a very famous leading neuroscientist by the name Dr. Andrew Newberg. And by his own admission, this is a disclaimer, he says that, quote, I am not even sure if God exists, but he's a leading neuroscientist. And he conducted a research on brain activity of individuals who consistently pray. When I say consistently, it's not like uh, Sunday temple, six days, something else, Sunday temple. No, consistently pray on a daily basis. So his research was about the effect of religious contemplation on brain. Pretty interesting, yeah? A neuroscientist conducting this research. So he writes, and I'm going to summarize in his um, research paper that engaging in 12 minutes of personal reflection and prayer each day makes a profound impact on our brain. It strengthens a unique neural circuit, neural circuit that specifically enhances our social awareness and empathy. It enhances our social awareness and empathy. It helps us love each other. It helps us love each other by developing higher sense of 
Notice this, compassion. Higher sense of compassion. How beautifully this is captured in our Vedic ancient texts. Srila Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami writes in Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, he lists 26 good qualities of Vaishnavas. And among other things, devotees work for everyone's benefit and are friendly. They are merciful. They are respectful. They are magnanimous and they're kind to everyone. And they're equal to everyone. But then he says, but how compassionate a Vaishnava must be. So he's listing 26 qualities of Vaishnavas. And some of these qualities are, like I said, right? Merciful, respectful, magnanimous, kind, equal to everyone. These are all compassion, qualities of compassion, right? So how compassionate a Vaishnava must be. So this whole theme expands from this one line in Nectar of Devotion, that one should not give unnecessary trouble to any living entity. So this is the principle of Krishna consciousness, that every Vaishnava should aspire or achieve, because remember, how did we start our prayers before the class started? Vancha kalpa triyubhasya kripa sindhu evacha patita nam pavanebhyo vaishnavebhyo namo namaha. We offer obeisances to the Vaishnava devotees of the Lord who are full of compassion for the fallen, conditioned souls. Who are, um, and, and this, this is a very, very important quality of a Vaishnava, to be compassionate, right? Because one of the symptoms of this compassion is that devotees cannot tolerate seeing others suffer. Bhakti Vinod Thakur, in his um, Sajana Thoshini, he writes that exhibiting com compassion towards living entities is of three kinds. First is display of compassion in regard to the gross body of the living entities. And this is counted amongst pious activities, by the way. It is a pious activity. Then he says distributing free prasadam or food to hungry people, distributing free medicine to the diseased people, distributing free water to the thirsty people, and distributing clothes to persons who are affected with cold or all, you know, these are all the different compassionate activities. But then he says, giving free education is also uh, born out of compassion in regards to the living entity, living entities. But then he says the highest kind of compassion in regard to the soul of the, is in the, is in regards to the soul of the living entities. From such compassionate propensity, the eagerness for delivering the fallen souls from miseries of material existence by awarding them Krishna's devotional service is produced. This is the highest form of compassionate activity. So, Acharyas are very clear. Yes, we see philanthropists, we see individuals who like to give charity to provide for medical treatments or education of um, impoverished children back home. Those are all good qualities. But the highest quality is pro being compassionate towards the soul of every living entity. Somebody mentioned that prayer also purifies our hearts. It purifies us. Because we become, by praying, we become more grateful. We become more thankful. As I said, we become more compassionate towards other living entities. Yes. So we, we, we start to see good in others and we start to see God in others and we start to see hand of God in everything around us. This is the power of prayer. So process of prayer is believing in something we cannot see with our material eyes but the reward of prayer is seeing things that you believe in. So process of prayer is something that we cannot see with our naked eyes. But the reward of prayer is seeing things that you believe in. Because prayers can make impossible things possible. There was, um, most of you probably are aware of the Apollo 13. Yes? So what happened? What happened in that journey? Does anybody remember? What was, what, what was so interesting about Apollo 13? What happened? 
So when this mission went to moon, they had challenges and problems. One of the oxygen tanks, it burst. So they could only rotate around and you know they had to land back on earth. I'm gonna summarize. But the, the whole process was so difficult that they were not sure that they're gonna survive to, to land back safely. And, in, and there was a time period of certain minutes when they were going to lose the transmission. And they were going to lose the transmission, they were not sure what is going to happen. So the government actually pleaded with the people of the country, we should all pray. We should all pray. In fact, the Apollo 13 coin, on one side says Apollo 13, on the other side, it's two hands together. So, so everyone, the entire nation, entire world was praying for the safe landing back of Apollo 13. And everyone survives. So you see, it is better to be faithful than doubtful. Yeah? You know, Srila Prabhupada once have, was having a conversation with someone and this person was very challenging to Srila Prabhupada and he was saying that, you know, Swamiji, you are all chanting and you're, you know, telling everyone to chant and do dance and kirtan and all this stuff and you're, you know, doing this prasadam distribution. What if at the end of all of this there is no God? So Prabhupada looked at him, Prabhupada put his hand on Prabhupada's head and he said, you know, we are chanting, dancing, and feasting. And if at the end of all of it, there is no God, it's okay. But what if there is? We are covered, you are not. <laughs> so, so, you know, it is, it, is always, it is always helpful for on our own self to be faithful, to have the faith. There was another story I'll tell you. There was a little boy, and he goes, different little boy, and goes to his grandpa. And they lived on the top of a hill. And the grandpa used to work by bringing, next, they were next to a coal mine. So grandpa used to bring a basket of coal hmm, for, um, um, for using it as a fuel. So one day the grandpa was not feeling well and he asked his grandson that, can you please go down to the river and get some water and he hands him that basket. Now, this is a typical Indian, you know, jute-made basket. You know, it can hold coal, but cannot hold water. So this little boy goes, he fills up the basket with water, he starts walking up the hill. By the time he reaches home, the water is all gone. So he goes, oh, I lost the water. I have to go back and this time I'm going to rush so I can bring the water back. So he goes and he takes the basket fills the water and he comes back up and water is again gone. So he does this two, three times, he gives up. He gives up again. And he goes to the grandpa. And he says to the grandpa that, Grandpa, the water, I'm trying hard it, and I'm trying sincerely and I'm trying to bring it up, but it just escapes the basket. I'm not able to bring the water, I'm so sorry. Well, grandpa said, son, look at the basket. When I gave you this basket, it was black because of coal. Because you tried sincerely so many times to come back, to please me, bring water, that blackness of the basket is gone. It is now clean. That is the effect of prayer on our heart. When we pray, we, we sing shishtashtakam prayers. Cheto darpanam marjanam. We're cleansing the heart, the mirror of the heart by praying. That is the effect of prayer. Over a period of time, our sincere prayers will cleanse our heart. Prayer also has a role to play in our relationships with each other, with our family members, distant and close. There's another story. In 1975, there was an individual by the name John Clay, not K-L-A-Y, it's his last name, K-L-A-E. He was a sailor. He loved to be in oceans. He used to travel around the world. So this time in, you know, late end of the summer, 
in New York City. He was approaching New York City in his boat. And because the, the water near the New York City area is very choppy, it always is, and it's also cooler than rest of the oceans around, um, his boat capsizes. So now, when the boat capsizes, you know, the Coast Guard can see the boat has capsized. So they, the, the boat, the, the, the Coast Guard comes, there's a helicopter, Coast Guard helicopter, and they're seeing the boat has capsized, but they cannot locate John Clay. And John Clay is thinking that, hey, there's a, I can see the Coast Guard boat, I can see a helicopter, they will soon find me. And nobody finds him, and they turn back, and they go away after a period of time. And now he's wondering, what am I going to do? And he can see the Empire State Plaza building just about a mile and a half, two, two miles away. He can see the light on the top of Empire State Plaza building. So he's thinking, I can see the light. It is not too far. Maybe I can swim. So he's try, he tries to swim. And by this time, like he, swim, he swam about a you know, half a mile or so. He is very tired because the ocean current is against him. And he's struggling. And he's thinking, this is so difficult. I, I'm so tired. I cannot get to the shore. Just then, at that time, this one, you know those floating balls? There are markers in the oceans. So one of those balls comes next to him. So he catches hold of that ball. And he's still able to see that light at the top of this Empire State Plaza building. And with the help of that ball, by seeing that marker, he tries to continue to swim. And after a period of time, he, he reaches the shore. And at the, by this time, he's hypothermic. He's like cold and he's like in a, not a good state. And people notice him and they take him to the hospital. So they take him to the hospital. Next day in the hospital, a friend of his comes to visit him. By, his friend's name was Chuck. So Chuck comes to visit him and says to John, John, I have to tell you something very interesting. Yesterday, me and my wife, for the first time, we have lived in the New York City area, but we have never been to Empire State Plaza building. So I took my wife to the top of Empire State Plaza building. And on the top of the Empire State Plaza building, there are these giant binoculars. You know, you can put a penny in, nowadays probably a dollar, but put a penny in and you can see the ocean. So when we were looking at that ocean through those giant binoculars, I was thinking of you. I was thinking of you and I was telling my wife, if there is anyone in this world who can cross over all these oceans around the world, it's my friend John Clay. Nobody else can do it. So John was like literally in tears because he realized that his friend was thinking of him and sending him these positive, you know, wishes. A week or two later, John Clay gets discharged from the hospital. So he is at his home. He receives a postcard from a friend in Latin America by the name Buck. So his friend Buck writes to him and he says, John, I am not sure what is happening, but I've been having these dreams for the last three nights with this number 869 and I'm only thinking about you. I don't know what is going on. I hope you are well. John calls his wife and he says, honey, can you bring that ball for me that, we, that I was holding on to in the ocean? Can you please bring it? She says, yes, of course. So she brings it. He, he turns the ball around and the marker number on the ball was 869. True story, 869. So you, you see how positive our relationships, when we think of each other in a positive manner and we are concerned about each other, when we pray for each other, it actually has an effect. When we say, when we ask for prayers, many times after our program ends, during the announcements, we ask for prayers. We must pray with our heart because our prayers has an effect. You and me, and everybody else feels happy because someone is praying for us. We should also pray for others' spiritual well-being. In this world, we are dependent on each other from birth until death. Yet somehow in between, we become arrogant. We become resentful towards those whom we once loved 
and we once cared for. We think that we don't need this person or that person to be around us. We think like that sometimes. But we must not forget that our good fortune is there because of others as well. It was in the past, it is in the present, and it will be in the future as well. Because someone along the way in our life has bestowed their love, their mercy, their compassion, their blessings, this ancient Vedic wisdom, knowledge upon us. So with prayerful heart, we need to be grateful and not resentful. Prayers is such a wonderful topic. And now we'll get started with today's class. Srila Prabhupada used to say that Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is a prayer. If one doesn't know how to pray, then they can just chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Does anyone know the meaning of Hare Krishna Maha Mantra? Engage me in your service. Okay, yes, yes. Krishna is also called as Hari. Now, not because you all had to hurry to the temple to be here at 11.30. That's not why he's called Hari. <laughs> but Krishna is also called Hari. Sarva Mangala Hare. Why is Krishna known as Hari? Does anyone know? Why is he known as Hari? Ah, takes away the negative effects and gives back positive. So he is called Hari. So Hare means to take away everything that is inauspicious and give us back Bhakti and everything that is auspicious. That is what Hare means. Now Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explains the meaning of Hari. He says, Prema Diya Mana Hare. Prema Diya Mana Hare. Krishna takes away everything inauspicious and gives something supremely auspicious. Krishna Prema. What is auspicious? Krishna Prema. Bhakti. Love of Godhead. That is most auspicious thing. Hence, he is called Hari. But, who steals everything from Krishna, including his heart? Radharani. So, she is called Hara. So, to address, to address Hara, it becomes Hare. Just like Ganga becomes He Gange. Narmada becomes He Narmade. Radha becomes Radhe. Yes? When you go to Vrindavan, you see anyone walking around, they will look at you and they will say, Radhe Radhe. They will not even say Krishna. They will say, Radhe Radhe. There is this beautiful prayer, which is, He Radhe Braj Devika Chalalite He Nando Suno Kutha You see, Radhe Devike Lalite hmm? Where is this prayer from? Sad Goswami Ashtakam. Beautiful prayers. So similarly, Hara becomes Hare because we are addressing her. So the meaning, like Mataji said, of Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is, O Supreme Personality of Godhead, O Srimati Radha Rani, the divine energy of Krishna, please engage us in your devotional service. That is the simple prayer, a meaning of Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. So, when we chant Japa or we do Kirtan, we should do it in a prayerful mood. But what does a prayerful mood mean? What does it mean? What is that? With humility, yes. What else? Submissiveness, yes. Submission. Perfect. What else? Sincerely. Sincere with the heart. What else? Helplessness, but not hopelessness. Yes? Gorang Prabhu just two days ago said that. Yes? What else? Our mood of prayer is what? No ulterior motive. Yes. Very important. 
with surrender, with love, with sincerity, all those are correct. But prayer is meaningless if it is done without proper mood, correct? Without proper emotion, without proper bhav, because then it just becomes a mundane mechanical activity. Yeah, it doesn't mean anything. Oh, we came to the temple, we saw the deities, we prayed, we left. You have to have heart. Cannot be mechanical. I will be the I'll be there at 12, 7, 12 17. By 12 30, I'm out. Yeah. That's not the mood of prayer. It is still a pious activity to come to temple, but that's not the mood of prayer. Srila Prabhupada used to say that when we pray to Krishna. One's prayer should be in the mood of a child crying for his mother. A little child crying for the mother. Child is helpless because the child cannot get up. Doesn't have the strength yet. But child can see the mother. So child is helpless but is not hopeless. Yes? So we should call out in that mood of helplessness like Prabhu said but not hopelessness. So there are two kinds of prayers, right? Two kinds. One which, one which is chanted with pure heart, like somebody said. Asking and wanting and being hungry for only the loving service of the Lord. But the other is that is contaminated with material desires. Oh, let me have this big contract, this big business deal, this job that I, the promotion that I'm, I'm hankering for. Let me have that. That, so we should try not to have material desires when we pray. Devotees of the Lord don't even ask for liberation. Like Mataji mentioned, nine processes of bhakti. That would, you know, we are involved in nine processes of bhakti. One of them is prayers, which is called vandana or vandanam. What was the verse that Prahlad Maharaj says in Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 7? Shravanam Kirtanam. Vishnu Smarnam, Padasevanam, Acharchanam, Vandanam, Dasyam, Sakyam, Atmani Vedanam. Those are the nine processes of bhakti. We perfect one of nine, our life is perfect. Prahlad Maharaj said to Hiraneka Shipu, who was his father, that my dear father, this ninefold process of bhakti is according to me the topmost learning, the topmost education. And any person who follows this is the Top most learned person in any society. And, and Srila Prabhupada gives a very, very interesting definition of Vandanam, which unless you have read the purport of Canto 7, Chapter 5, verse number 23 and 24, you probably don't know the answer. So I'm going to ask, does anybody know how Prabhupada defines Vandanam? You'll be surprised. And this is for all the pujaris in the temple room actually. Prabhupada defines Vandanam as offering respectful obeisances. Very interesting. Yes? So let's, uh, let's take a look uh, at the, what the purport says. In, in Prabhupada, so it's, it's a short, short paragraph, I'll read it. Vandanam Although prayers are part of deity worship, they may be considered separately like the other items, such as hearing and chanting, and therefore separate statements are given herewith. The Lord has unlimited transcendental qualities and opulences, and one who feels influenced by the Lord's qualities in various activities offers prayers to the Lord. In this way, he becomes successful. In this connection, now this is important, the following are some of the offenses to be avoided. To offer obeisances on one hand. So many times we come into the temple room, we have our cell phone in one hand or we have a japa beads in one hand or we have a book or a water bottle and we give our dandavats and one hand is holding on to our, our item and the other hand is in the front. Not the proper way to do dandavat or obeisances. For Prabhus. Um, second, to offer obeisances with one's body covered. Uh, we, we can avoid as much as we want. This one, 
is to show, third one, to show one's back to the deity. So never ever face your back to the deity, if at all avoidable. To offer obeisances on the left side of the deity. So that's why we offer obeisances on the right side of the deity. This one is for the brahmanas in the room. The last one. To offer obeisances very near to the deity. So when I read that, that was very interesting to me. Because when we are on the altar, either we are doing arthi or we are doing offering, we do dandavat. According to Prabhupada, we should not be offering obeisances near to the deity. So something we need to be mindful of going forward. So anyway, so th th that was a very interesting definition of Vandanam. So what about, okay, so we know who to pray to. We, we've talked about what to pray for, what mood we need to have, how we should pray. Who else can we pray to? Spiritual master, devotees, Vaishnavas, who else can we pray to? Acharyas, Tulsi, Ganga, Mother Cow. Srila Rupa Goswami defines Uttama Bhakti in, in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. It's a time check, we have 15 minutes. In, in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, what verse is that? Those who have read Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, those who have done Bhakti Shastri, I'll spot people in the room. Anya Bhilashita Shunyam Jnana Karmadi Navritam Anukulyena Krishnanu Shilanam Bhaktir Uttamam So, Srila Rupa Goswami is saying that the topmost bhakti is cultivation of service to Krishna without contamination of any fruitive activity desire or without desire for liberation or without any personal motivation like you said earlier only then it becomes topmost service to Krishna if it has any of those three things in our prayers in our performance of bhakti then we have to evolve and get better Jiva Goswami also explains Krishna Anushilanam. He says Krishna word includes all things and people that are dear to Krishna. That is Krishna, Tulsi, Vaishnavas, Mother Cow, Ganga, Acharyas, Yamuna Devi, Dust of Raj, all these things. They're all very, very dear to Krishna. So they all are worshipable. So when we offer prayers, we offer prayers to all these entities or the personalities that are very dear to Krishna. Tulsi is very dear to Krishna. So that must be our understanding when we stand in front of the deities with our palms folded and we are communicating with the Lord. So then the question arises, what do we pray for? We've talked about that Okay, firstly, without any material contamination, as Rupa Goswami has told us, without any material, sorry, desires. So unless we have proper knowledge and understanding, we do not know what to pray for. I'll give you an example, hypothetical. Let's say there was a big charity event happening in this town, and Elon Musk, who lives here now, says, hey, anybody who comes, I'm going to give them as much as they want. So somebody goes there, in the, stands in the line and asks Elon Musk, hey, can I have $10? Elon Musk gives $10. This person is very happy, comes back. But this person could have asked for much more, depending on whatever project this person is supporting. But that person's knowledge was only limited to a finite thing. That this person, according to this person, was a huge thing. Yes? Same way, when we go in front of the deity and we ask for something material, it is, going, it is like going to that rich man and asking for $10. When Krishna can give us eternal life, eternal bliss, freedom from birth, old age, disease, death, freedom from IRS taxes, freedom from job insecurity, freedom from school exams, freedom from SATs, freedom from classes, freedom from fights and quarrels, Freedom from anxiety and stress. And what did we ask for? 
He can give us eternal residence in spiritual world in Goloka Vrindavan. He can give us Krishna Prema. Yet we look for ten dollars. What did Dra Draupadi do? What did Draupadi do? When Draupadi's Chirharan was happening, she was holding on to her sari, her robe for such a long time. But ultimately, she let that go and then she raised her hands and she prayed to Krishna, if it is your desire, you save me. The words are very important. What did she say? Krishna, if it is your desire, then you save me. She didn't say, Krishna, it is my desire that you save me. Or Krishna, you have to save me. I have done so much. I have suffered so much. She didn't say any of that. Her father didn't want her when she was born. She had a very difficult life. At no point her life was simple and happy. Until and unless she was with Krishna. She's been through so many difficulties. But even... At that moment, when a woman's honor is everything, she let go and she said, if it is only your desire, you save me. Mother Kunti, similarly, what, wait, what did she say? What are the prayers of Mother Kunti? Mother Kunti is praying to Krishna that Krishna, after the war is finished and you have been always by the side of my sons. Now, when you go away, how are we to think of you? At least when we were troublesome in our mind, we were going through difficulties, we were always thinking of you. Now the war is over. How are we supposed to think of you? Srila Prabhupada would tell a story of an old lady that this old lady, she lived in a village and she would go to a forest to cut wood. And she would cut wood, she would bring it back to the village marketplace and she would sell it. And she was very old. She had done this for decades and decades of her life. She was alone. So one day, while coming back from the forest, she gets very tired and she puts the basket of full of wood top of her head down and she sits down. And she is thinking, I cannot get up now. I, I just have no strength to pick this basket up again. Supreme Lord appears in front of her and asks her, what can I give you? What do you think she asked for? The basket, to put the basket back on her head, yes. You know, we, we connect, we, we get used to living a lifestyle because we have lived in material bodies for millions and millions of years in the material creation. So our thought process, our thinking has gotten used to a certain way that only connects happiness, success, worthiness to everything material and temporary in nature. Because that's what we have seen. Another time, Srila Prabhupada was traveling in a train in India. So the train came to a, a stop. A, a, a person, a man was passing by the bogey and through the window he notices this sadhu sitting inside the train. So this, this person must be pious. So he goes, I want to come inside and take your blessings. So now, when growing up, you know, when we used to go to our elders and we used to bow down, they would give us some blessings. You know, some of those blessings would be, you know, Ayushman Bhav, Chiran Jeevi Bhav, somebody is going on a war, then Vijay Bhav, somebody is going for an exam, Vijay Bhav. So this person, you know, comes inside the bogey, in, in the compartment and says, Swamiji, please give me your blessings. And Prabhupada Prabhu, Prabhu understood this person's mood. So now, Srila Prabhupada looked at him and Srila Prabhupada said, May your entire family get Krishna Prema. May your entire family get blessed with eternal service to the lotus feet of Krishna by becoming similar to my disciples in this compartment. Who, by, by the way, those all disciples were wearing saffron robes, they had shaved heads, they had tilak, they were sannyasis. So, as soon as he heard that and he saw all those who were there, he got up and he ran away. 
you know lord chaitanya mahaprabhu he gives the same blessings krishna mati rastu may you become krishna conscious so we should know what to ask for something that is eternally good for us and not just materially that is short term beneficial to us and we'll finish with this one last purport that shilap um, there's 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 a um, there's a text in shrimad bhagavatam canto 10 chapter 41 verse 51 and there's a back story i'll tell you a back story of this and we'll pull up the verse if um uh, tarun tarun kishor prabhu you can pull up that verse 10 4151 shrimad bhagavatam so the the background is that krishna has just arrived in mathura and he meets nanda maharaj and there are other cowherd men also over there who have come to mathura to pay their taxes so they are paying they come to mathura to pay taxes to comes of course right so on his way krishna and balram they are together they meet a weaver you know who a weaver is who makes cloth stitches cloth yeah so so this weaver gives some very nice clothes and ornaments to krishna and balram and he decorates them nicely because they're going you know into the king inside the kingdom of mathura and you know so the lord is very pleased with him they go a little bit for, further they meet another devotee by the name sudama this is not the same sudama of vrindavan this is a different sudama it's not the sudama who actually came later to mathura that brahmana friend of krishna no this is a devotee by the name sudama who was a malikar you know what a malikar is one who makes flower garlands who makes garlands so this malika he offers these beautiful long garlands fragrant garlands to both krishna and balram and krishna and is so pleased with this malikar's devotion that he asks him tell me what can i do for you how can i serve you this is krishna asking a devotee how can i serve you because that pleases krishna that is krishna's relationship with his devotees so uh, prabhu are we ready 10 4151 104151 so this sudama this malika asks for three benedictions do you know what those three benedictions were we will see them shortly on the screen so well i i don't think i think they're having trouble but i'll read it so sudama sudama chose unshakable devotion for krishna so that's the first he chose unshakable devotion for krishna who is the supreme soul who is the supreme soul of all of existence so that's the first benediction he asked for the second benediction he asked for was friendship with his devotees yes yeah we can see it on one screen now so the second benediction he asked for was friendship with his devotees and the last one was transcendental compassion for all living beings so if we think back to last hour or so these are the three things that in a prayerful mood anyone should be aspiring for this these three benedictions are encapsulation of entire class today because these three benedictions are going to give us the most important eternal things that we need in this lifetime and beyond because if you think about is there anything higher than unshakable devotion for the supreme personality of godhead no what about friendship with his devotees because to krishna his devotees are most important you cannot approach krishna directly anyway krishna says you can only approach me through my devotees so he, the friendship with his devotees is a supremely beneficial relationship for all of us 
and then the transcendental compassion for all living beings. Because Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita that nobody is more dear to me than one who shares my message with others. With that, we will stop and we'll take if somebody has any questions or comments or reflections. Okay. I've been just reminded we have to read the 15th chapter of Gita. So I would ask somebody to come here and read the 15th chapter of Gita. Is that what we are doing, Mahasundi Mataji? Thank you, Ramaji Prabhu, for that absolutely wonderful class. Kiran I had a funny story. I was sharing with some devotees yesterday when Prabhu was talking about 10th and 12th board exams. I was sharing with some devotees yesterday that I was so convinced that the only way I would get good results is if I listened to Vishwasasanam all night before my board exam results. So it got to the point where my parents were tired of hearing it because for about 12 hours leading up to the results before they were online at 2 or 3 a.m. in the morning, it was just Vishwasasana going on and my parents were like, I think we're kind of done. You know, your, your effort is done, but I was so convinced in the power of prayer that it would help me. So thank you Prabhu for that. Very powerful class. Um, this is our last Sunday feast in this month of Purushottam. And it is in this month of Purushottam it is recommended to glorify Krishna more through these flowers of verses. Um, and one way to glorify Krishna is by reciting something that Krishna himself spoke. So throughout the month of Purushottam, as we've been uh, doing both, we've been reciting uh, verses from the Gita. We've been focusing on chapter 15 called Purushottama Yoga. And then after this, before Arti, we will sing a bhajan glorifying Krishna as part of our Vandanam prayers today. So uh, we will chant the chapter 15 shlokas together. Uh, is Ryan here? Ryan's not here. Would one, any of the boys, one of any boys, girls, any of the youth would like to recite chapter 15? Paul, just take the mic. We'll all chant together. Anyone? Any volunteers? And we'll all chant together when Sanket comes here. Shri Bhagavan Vacha Urdva Mula Madha Shakam Ashwatam Prahuravyayam Chendam Siyasya Parnani Yastam Veda Saveda Vit Adas Chordam Prashritastasya Shakha Guna Pravrita Vishaya Pravala Adas Chamula Nyanusantatani Karmanu bandhini manushya loke Na rupa masheha tato palabhyate Nanto na chadir na chasam pratishtha Ashvattamenam subirudha mulam Asanga shastre na dridhe na chitva Tathapadam tat parimargitavyam Yasmin gatana nivartanti buyaha Tameva chadyam purusham prapadye yata pravriti prashrita purani nirmana moha jita sanga dosha adhyatma nitya vinivritta kama dvandve vimukta sukadhukka samgner kachyantya mudha padamavyayam tat Natad bhasayate suryo nashashanko na pavakaha yad gatvana nivartante tadhama paramam mama mamai vamsho jiva loke jiva bhuta sanatanaha manha shastran indriyani prakritistani karshati Shariram yadavapnoti yachap yukramati shwaraha grihitvaitani samyati vayur gandhani vashayat shrotam chakshuhu sparshnam cha rasanam grahanam evacha adishthaya manashchayam 
विषयानुपसेवते उत्क्रमंत स्थित वापी भुंजानुना विमूनापश्यी पश्यी ज्ञानचक्षुषा यतंत योगिश्चन पश्यन्तात्मस्थित यतंतोप्यकृता नयन पश्यचेत यदादित्यागत तेजो जगद्भाषयते खिल यंद्रंशी यछाघ्न तत्जो विधिमक काम विश्या च भूतानी धान्यमोजसा पुष्णा चौषधी सर्वा समो भूता रसात्मक अहम वैश्वानरो भूवा प्राणीना देहमाश्रिता प्रणापान सयुक्ता पच्चाम्यन्न चुर्विधम सर्वस्म हृदय सन्नीष्ट मत्थ स्मृतिर्ज्ञानमपोहनम च वेदर्वेरहमे वेद्यो वेदातकृद्वेद विदेवचाहम म पुषौ लोके क्षरश्चार एव क्षर सर्वा भूता कुठस्थोक्षर उच्य उत्तम पुषस्तन्य परमात्मेदाहृत यो लोकात्रयश्या बिभर्त्यय ईश्वर यस्मात्म अक्षरादी चोत्तम अतस्मी लोके वेद प्राति पुषोत्तम यो मेवूढ़ो जानती पुषोत्तम स सर्विदती मर्वेन भारत गुह्यतम शास्त्र इद मुक्ता मैया नग एक बुद्ध्वा बुद्धिम सैतकृत भारत हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा 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 हरे हरे Thank you, uh, Sanket, and thank you, devotees. So we're going to be now chanting uh, this whole month of Purushottamas. We've been chanting one one Ashtakam in the glorification of the Lord. Um, so we thought it's befitting to end this last Sunday by chanting uh, Shri Kunja Bihari Ashtakam. Uh, so for those of you who are here for the first time, our most beautiful deities on the altar are named Shri Shri Radha Kunja Bihari. So we wanted to make sure that today we are going to end uh, this Purushottam Mass by chanting Kunja Bihari Ashtakam. Once the bhajan comes on stage, we will get started, um, and then after that, we will transition to Arti. So once you hear the conch shell, we request everyone to please rise, and we will move forward to Arti. Are we ready? Are we ready? Okay. ni manjulavarna phullani pakusu manchita karna Krishna la bira krora si hari sundara to jayati kunj bihari राधिका वदना चंद्र चकोरा सर्वा बल्लवा वधुद्रिति चौरा हाय 
चार चारी चतुरा तांचित चारी चारु तो जयती कुंज विहारी सर्वता प्रतिता कौली का पर्वा त्वाम सने नहरिता वासव गर्वा गोष्ट रक्षण कृत गिरिधारी लीलाय जयती कुंज विहारी राग मंडल विभूषिता वंशी विभ्रमेन मदनोत्सव शंसी माना चरिता सुखहारी श्रेणी बीजयती कुंज विहारी सुख सारी सात कुंभ रुचि हरी दुक्ला के की चंद्र का विरजित छूला नव्य यौवन लस द्रज नारी रंजनो जयती कुंज विहारी स की कृता सुगंधी पतिरा स्वर्ण कांची परी सोबी कटीरा राधि को नयो दरबारी कुंज रो जयती कुंज विहारी गौर दातु तिला कोज वाला भाला केली चंचलिता चांपक माला आद्रिकंदर ग्रीषेव विसारी सुब्रवं जयती कुंज विहारी विभ्रमो चला दृगन चल नृत्य प्रीता गोपाल नाखिल कृत्या प्रेम मत वृषभानु कुमारी नागर तो जयती कुंज विहारी
अष्ट मधुरा कुंज बिहारी कृदय पतती अखिल हारी सा प्रयति विलसा पर भागम तस् पाद कमलाशन रागम सुंदर ओ जयति कुंज विहारी चारु तो जयति कुंज विहारी लीला जयति कुंज विहारी श्रेणी बीर्जयति कुंज विहारी कुंज विहारी श्रेणी बीर्जति कुंज विहारी कुंज रो जयति कुंज विहारी रो जयति कुंज विहारी कुंज रो हरे हरे राम हरे राम हरे कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे हरे हे आओ हरे हरे कृष्णा कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्णा हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम राम हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे Thank <laughs> you.
चक हरे 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 राम राम हरे 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 कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण हरे हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे हे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे 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 कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे राम हरे 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 ह